Miss Illuminati. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> oh, shit, I just stole Barry oh, Q's thing. My bad. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit, I just stole your whole shit. What's going on, everybody? DJ Link's here back again. And Spidey Spotted Tumblers uh, in the mix. Episode 133 brought to you by Spidey Spotted Tumblers for your custom made powder coated stainless steel tumbler knees. Hit up Jose Gonzalez. For all your comic book pressing needs, hit up the comic chiropractor. C3 is, I don't want to say in full swing, but C3 is is off and running for the year. Swinging by the knees. Swinging by the knees. Martin style. Martin is the official mascot of C3. Uh, It's going. If you you haven't. (laughs) Wrong Martin. (laughs) We're talking about Martin from Need. Gary B's Need. Big old Dick Martin. That's who he was talking about. BDM. Yep. Um... If you were on the fence about copying one of these Austin LeMay art prints, I'm here to tell you there are only five left over on djlinks.bigcartel.com, and they will be sold out. We only have five left in the inventory. I'm not lying. I'm not trying to hype it up, none of that stuff. It's legit. Only five left of these uh, prints. Also, want to shout out the entire Link squad for putting up with me and supporting me. Big ups to all the Link Squad. As a reminder, this month's Links box that we'll be drawing for, not next Friday, but the following Friday, is going to be a $200 comic book Mr. Robox curated by our very own Mr. Nick's Kicks and Comics. We heard your feedback. We put out a poll on the uh, Members Only Community tab on YouTube, and everybody said, hey, we want a slab with some raws. And who better to do that than Mr. Nick's kids? Who is we? I voted for the Nano Gauntlet. You were out. You were out voting, huh? I have no problem with the mystery box, but this graphic is much better than what Nick has. I just he needs to steal this one. Can you know yeah, how much that graphic would cost me if I outsourced that to DJ Link's Remix? We're paid for the programs he uses. Oh, first of all, yeah. First of all, he'll tell me no. He dollar box turns into a three hundred dollar box real quick. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> up the price for you. So, yeah, thank you. Um, Nick is going to put together that. Only five left. Thank you, sir. Nick is going to put together that uh, mystery box for the winner. So it's not like it's just going to be a random mystery box. Uh, the winner will get in contact with Nick, tell them likes, dislikes, things like that, just so they don't get an entire box of um, Shikari Titty books. Not everybody. RBQ Studios, go. Hey, I just want to say uh, congratulations, 133 episodes. This is amazing. And to get this done in three months, it's unheard of. It's unheard of to get 133 episodes in three months' time. Congratulations, DJ. That's more than two a day in some cases. Yeah. I appreciate that. For the last, uh, for the last two weeks, I've been focusing on these episodes. This is all I've been doing. Um, I, I, I appreciate you for recognizing my contributions to Friday nights, 9 p.m. As I want to throw that right back at you, all of you guys. Love you guys. It's okay. <laughs> these, guys are, these guys are so so sad looking down there. I don't feel well. Much. <laughs> Only because uh, some, some full white decided to go to the lake tonight. Oh, I gotta, God. I gotta suck it up and and. He was planning on taking the night off. Be tough. Wait a minute, that was tonight. Oh no, I've got to go. Oh, to the we're going to the lake. You, you don't, you don't have to be. Oh yeah, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler went to the lake. I'm going to go a large sized boat to stick my big yeah. ass in. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler went to the lake at the end. Woo! But Tyler, when Tyler gets in the boat, he just sticks his feet out the back and paddles. It's like <laughs> it's like Fred Flintstone on the water. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Not even. He's going for a Pacific Rim convention. <laughs> so they're, they're just, right ahead. <laughs> uh, fucking Tyler. It's like when we're kids playing in the, in the fucking tub. <laughs> Tyler goes to the lake. <laughs> Tyler, you big dummy. I hope you're having fun. Um, last but finally, I, I guess last but not least, I said it finally. Yo, big ups to the comic shell. Uh, I've entered into an official uh, partnership sponsorship with the comic shell. So use code Link Squad for ten percent off that amazing comic thing. I got it right here. I gotta pick one of those up for Heroes Con. Yo, legit, this shit is absolutely fire. No. So you 
Put your slabs in there. Look at me hawking stuff. Oh, 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 you, oh, shit. You can't see what's on that side. Oh, oh shit. That's what I told you. <laughs> well, now we got to know. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. What's in the box? <laughs> you don't, you don't want to know. Oh, shit. Nick even shut his fucking light off. Nick, you can go home if you want for <laughs> You, you want to go to the principal's office? <laughs> Come on, man. We love you, man. Thank you for sticking this out. I know Nick is a little bit under the weather. He doesn't feel well. Why is he here? He feel well. Nick, we love you, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Just Shout out to, to you. Just to show you my dedication to episode 133. We love you, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Let's say what's up. Let's say what's up to the chat. Uh, real quickly, Los Crucians, what's going on, sir? Cliff on Comics, what's poppin'? House of L, Mrs. Lynx, Eli, Ryan Riley, what is going on? Brian Barrick, Couchin' and Slouchin' with C. Bizzle, Wellbore, Esteban, Joe Anachronic Comics in the house, Trev the Shipping Guru, Rob Fatstacks is here. Uh, unfortunately, sir, we wouldn't have any, we won't have any tattoo talk tonight. Um, Tino Nelson, what's going on, man? Good to see you on Wednesday at the shop. Brian Nelson, yes, in the house. Circumstances throwing up that uh, member for five months. What kind of YouTuber are you? We can touch on that. Remind me, this, this Sticky Goose video. Um, who else we got? I'm in the house. Well, Boar, Trev, Cliff, Brian. I think Brian in the next couple of weeks is going to do an update on the com- uh, CBC Awards. Thank God. It's been forever. Yeah, I want to know what's going on. Collecting with Durs in the house. Paint the page. Oh, they, they don't want me to click on people's names. I'm sorry. They, they, literally backstage, these guys yelled at me. Artem is here early. Artem, what's going on? What's happening? Gary B, the casual comic guy. Seth E. Levin in the, in the house. Joffrey, what's popping? Joffrey, Spidey's Powder Tumblers in the house. Channel sponsor. Who else we got? Izzyverse NYC. The rats are roaming. Member for eight months. Izzyverse in the house. Before we move any further, just want to tell people we do have a giveaway for later tonight. Bunch of books all in Mylar. Mylar. Mylar Art of His Land that I got from my guy, Mr. Winking. Gary B. Showing his love for the Link Squad. Member for 26 months. Collecting with Durs. Member for nine months. Pre-420. Get those lungs ready. Oh, that's tomorrow. Do you guys participate participate in the devil's lettuce and the sweet green in the in the gunja? No, I'm an adult. Nick, you're, you're, you're muted, sir. The devil's lettuce, he said. Uh, what it, what Mark says he's a, no, I've, I've served my time. I'm good. Serve your time. Remy Q, do you, do, you, do you participate in the madness that is known as reefer? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just got our answer. Nicholas? I'm high right now. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Nick no, is currently never, tripping ball. Ne- ne- never have. Never have. Yeah, I just took those gummies a couple of weeks ago, and then that – no, a couple of months ago, and that put me on my ass. That's funny that you highlight Jim's comment when you said that. I know. Oh, snap. How <laughs> ironic. What's up, Jim and Kenny Bird? What's, what's popping? So where do you guys want to start at? You want to you want to talk about people setting themselves on fire in front of the courthouse? <laughs> well, has anybody died this week? Oh, I mean, we've, been starting, we've been starting to show off like that the past few weeks. Has anybody died this week of, of note? Uh, all right. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, we might get we might get. You really, you really want me to show that? No, 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 no. You really right. want me to show no. that? No, no, because no, then we're over here laughing. The guy's no, on fire. Yeah, yeah don't, don't don't show it. Don't show it. Don't show it. Yeah, don't show it. This but ladies, there is a video of so someone got lighting it. themselves on fire at a courthouse. In case you wanted to see it. Wait a minute. So you got you got it paused, right? You can do it paused. Don't show the video. Just. just So, ladies and gentlemen, that is a dude that set himself on fire, and that is a woman that, in the video, yo, cut your nails, B. What's the yeah. hell? I just had a new yard work the past two days, bro. And that is a woman that just, she wasn't there when he set himself on fire. She went and sat down to watch this show. Maybe she was a little chilly. That's work. exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> just, yep, I'm going to sit right there. Yeah, I'm <laughs> She oh, ran over there too, like, oh shit, this seat's available. That's why there's video footage on everything. Maybe she thought it was the next Rage Against the Machine album cover. Oh shit. Yeah, there we go. 
Uh, what are they saying? Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! That's dumb, right? No? No, that's a uh, system over down. Oh, that's thinking. system. What's Rage Against the Machine? Toxicity album. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yeah. Because he loved me, Esteban. Barbecue, how do you like your ribs? Big shout out to Carl Weathers, who we recently... Oh, my God. It's always... We're starting um, a... One of these streams again. We always start off with a with a memorandum with a what do you call it? In memoriam? We don't we don't need any yeah, comments at all. It's like yeah. You know what it is? I'm trying yeah. to bait Remy, right? So we highlight the dead person so Remy Q could be like that dead person. That guy OJ has... never liked him. Pass. I mean yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even know like... it, but it was OJ's kid that did all that killing, right, Remy? <laughs> 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 In case you missed it, 30 years later, Angel's cracked the case. Angel cracked the case. Was, My thing is just from work be, for three hours was never questioned. Be original. I mean, the fire setting, the self-immolation thing has been done already. Just yeah, a couple times original. this year alone. Of what? Self-immolation. Check this out. Though. First of all, you throwing too many big words at me. Okay, now, because I don't understand them, I'm going to take them as disrespect. Watch your mouth. I learned that from the crow. I've never heard that. Which which pro? The the fucking the new the one? Original, the trailer? The, the original one. No, no, no. We don't talk about movies. We're talking about the, the original graphic novel, so to speak. Self emulation. Is that any good, the original crow? Uh I would give my 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 trade paperback to you, but I gave it to Miko. Um so I would still say yes. Do a break on that art, did he? Hmm? Oh he still man. didn't give you a discount on that page, <laughs> that cover. Oh, Wait a minute. Just, I'm not, just I'm not liberty to discuss. <laughs> just to get the chat up to speed, the way Nick just flexed on us was like uncanny. Yeah, Nick's no, I, He's with Miko now. Thanks, oh. thanks, thanks. Be to Mark. I appreciate Mark. I just make. Yeah, people, I, I just connecting people, bringing them together like butt cheeks. That's all yep, I do. Yep. And. I, well, I don't know what to say, but thank but you, Mark. Nick, yeah. Nick said I would give you my graphic novel, but I get I gave it to famed artist Miko Suyan because we're boys. Yeah, yeah. It's boys with a Z. It was like, hey, weird. check this out. You know what? You what up, Vet? This is a gift for you. Oh, you need this as reference material? Here you go, sir. I was gonna I was gonna pass this along to the Illuminati, but you keep this. I would exactly. give you my copy, but I just don't want to. That's the one. That's the one I gave him. Oh, wow. Norm Meanwhile, it was good. Oh. Yo, that's crazy. Damn it, Nick. You are you are flexing, rubbing shoulders with high society. You born and bred Texans are another breed, sir. We are. <laughs> Yo, what's your favorite rap beef of all time? And the reason why I bring this up, because I was going to ask you about the – the Drake, if y'all up to date on current <laughs> hip hop rap beef, but let's. What's your favorite rap beef of all time? Remy Q Studios' favorite rap beef. It doesn't have to end in a homicide, by the way. Just favorite rap beef. Little glass tootsie. Yes. <laughs> yes. Best one ever. Uh, I mean, that was yes. That was long time. It's still out there somewhere. Somewhere I bet in you the ether. A couple, a couple days. Somewhere in the ether. Wow, there you go. I thought um, that was the best. I have to disagree with you. That was super one-sided, sir. No, no I had both of them on, on different shows. I mean, we got we to gotta draw it out on a map. We have to map it out on a big chalkboard. Oh. Figure out who's where. That was incredible. Nick, Nick, what's your favorite rap beef? I don't know. I go I go back to the days of Big Daddy Kane and Kumo D, but um there were two that stick out. I, I think the Jay-Z versus Nas when Jay-Z walked in and when Ether won uh the vote on Hot 97 mm. that night. But the way was it Jay who put Havoc up on Summer Jam in the tutu? Yeah, Jay put Havoc, not Havoc, a Prodigy. Prodigy's Probably. pictures, RIP Prodigy, from when he was in ballet school. So he put up his. Uh... So it wasn't in a tutu. It was uh, he was dressed up as Michael Jackson. He was a kid dressed up as Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't, you know, 
late forties dressed up like Michael Jackson on a Friday night. He was a kid, uh, whatever. But and then, the, uh, I mean, it really wasn't a beef because he ended it with one line, but the the terrorist line from Freaky Louie just. Oh yeah, yeah. Destroyed DJ's beard. For yeah, yeah, there's no. He ain't had a beard since. Bro, no, I <laughs> DJ, go ahead and sing your Mad Libs, cause my man, you look like DJ Khaled. <laughs> as far as your face, you need to go hairless, cause my man, you look like a straight up terrorist. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you. Oh, shit. Another one. Damn. I love you. <laughs> that was he DJ. literally, he literally buried he DJ's beard. beard. He's like shave beard immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful too. Every week that ever since, was thick. It never came back again. Mm-hmm. Psych. Oh! 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 Louis putting up plates now too. You don't want to mess with Louis. Not a rapper. Yo, Louis was looking brolic, son. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like what? Sun's out, guns out. Uh, uh, Y'all didn't ask me, and I'm going with Durs. That's I think that's the uh, greatest rap beef of all time. Not just because like them beefing back and forth, but when Eminem put out Rap God, MGK did Rap Devil, which wasn't a, a bad little diss track or whatever for, for MGK. But when he put out Kill Switch in response to it, and he took every single bar that MGK did, and he did it on levels mm-hmm. that are all Easter egged into pop culture and MGK's personal life, Nothing of that detailed level I think I've ever heard in my life before. And it turned him into like a, a weird a, a weirder dude. He's been wearing pink and banging Megan Fox ever since. Yeah, knocking out one of the hottest women on the planet. He literally I don't know, I don't know how weird. Well, he, he literally switched genres and became successful. Eminem buried his rap career so deep that he became successful as a pop artist, like legit. Yeah, uh, that was again. That was like super one-sided. Uh, MGK, yeah, he did bury him and all that stuff. And that um, Eminem's retort was fire. I'm just playing Diddy. You know, I love you, but Eminem, like some of his Benzino stuff, is is he's just having fun. He doesn't have to try with yeah. that. But yeah, and he, he's just so so insane. Um, for, Benzino's for me, crazy. Like I don't even know. Like he's only famous for attempting to be for the Eminem. Le- legit, yeah. He did his his last video. He did it at Mom's Spaghetti, Eminem Spaghetti Spot, and it was just like I guess they were filming like a phone. No offense, but my favorite <laughs> rap, my favorite rap beef is gonna be Biggie versus Tupac. It didn't end on a positive note, and that's how rap beefs are supposed to end. Not like today's rap beef, where it's just terrible. Like, have you, are you listening to the, like the the Rick Ross and the Drake and the bro? It's horrible. Rick Ross said, "This isn't a rap song." Thought he said, huh? He said, huh? A bunch of times. He okay. ripped it. I, I actually <laughs> like Rick Ross. So you know how at the end of the rap beef song, you start talking shit. Rick Rick Ross says, and I quote, I bet you're wearing your Dockers with no underwears on, white boy. Yeah, I bet you're wearing your Dockers with no underwears on. Who is he going at, though? At Drake. I'm with Durs on this one, too. Young MGK was fire. Alpha and Omega is, is so goddamn good. And when he did the the little thing was sale on sale. That was amazing too. I thought that was between him and uh, what's his face from the West Coast. <laughs> We're the ones with the dick holes. <laughs> yeah, you got to. You got to. <laughs> that's uh that's a callback to that Dave Sapel joke. <laughs> so Tay Prime says my favorite is happening now. Kendrick and Cole are filing on all. I completely disagree. J. Cole's like did first of all, do you guys even know what J. Cole did? No. So Kendrick, this is Drake and J. Cole for doing the first person shooter, blah, blah, top three, whatever. J. Cole makes the most boringest diss track ever to Kendrick Lamar, (laughs) then goes on stage and apologizes, then removes it from all streaming platforms. It was called Seven Minute Drill or something. Yo, it was the most boringest, like, we're going to need a discussion. That, that's what that thing was. We're going to need a discussion. It's not a rap beef. Whatever happened to, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. That's what I want to hear. He said something about the size of his feet, too. Something like how you get size in seven and a half samples or something like that. That, that was Drake, where Drake goes, um, how you big stepping, because it was like his last album was something, the big steppers. How you big stepping in size seven men's, which I thought was hilarious. Being a size eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm better than this guy. Um, nah, fuck rap beef. How about some real beef? You guys want to start real beef with somebody? Who? Sticky Goose? Fuck that dude. Oh, shit. I wonder that, that, I I that he's like trying to. I th- I th- someone on this morning, I don't know anything enough about the guy, but someone this morning said they uh, kind of like assess the oh, situation man. as he wants to be a part of the community so bad, but doesn't know how. So he just takes makes weird videos about the community that he's self isolated from. And he put out some video that he's like calling out a bunch of channels and people and. He even highlighted a comment from Jim Mint. I didn't watch it, but while I was on my stream, I was like just sliding through it, looking at freeze frames, and he even highlighted Jim Mint commenting, "How are you gonna say something about me when your background looks just like mine?" Like referring to like how he, they they look like they they're into the same stuff. You know what I mean? Like, how, do, how are you gonna make? How are you gonna try to clown me when we clearly are in the same? When, when I'm your blueprint, homie. Well, I don't. I, I don't know. I, I'm just. Just like the slabs and the omnibus and statues, like they clearly like the same stuff. They should be like best friends. They need to get bunk beds. <laughs> um, I don't know. It seems weird. It seems weird. Biggie brought it to my attention. Biggie's the uh, he's got his finger on the pulse of what's going on in the YouTube's drama scene. Yeah, I'm I, I'm not one of those. Yeah, it sounds super negative. Seth Eleven says. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. One, I'm not one of those. Uh, People that go looking for that. I haven't seen said video that you guys were talking about this morning. Well, that's what Marcus was pointing out that you said reminds you about what kind of YouTuber are you? Mm, that was with the, the comment. That was the sticky use video, I think. So what kind of YouTuber would you describe yourself as? Let's start with Nick. Nick, if you need some bounce, bounce, Pete. No, I'm okay. Um, I don't know. I'm not really heavy into making content right now. I really can't answer that question safely. J- All right, so we're going back to the first thing. J. Cole is one of the best lyricals writer in the game. Come on now, DJ. I never said J. Cole wasn't nice. J. Cole is super nice. He's also the cure for insomnia. J. Cole is boring as fuck, in my opinion. Boring. Boring. Super nice. Just boring. So what kind of... Uh, what kind of a YouTuber are you, Remy Q, according to the Sticky Goose scale? Where do you fall on the Sticky Goose scale? Well, what, what, what was the scale? scale? The scale, yeah. I don't know what the scale is. Uh, Maybe Marcus was for referring to his uh, history Asshole to Tuesday, Tuesday where John's comics with kids brought up like just a dichotomy of like, uh, God, what was it? I don't think it was branded. It was, it was something like branded or passion or something. I forget. Cliff... Cliff was there. Cliff, what were the two categories that John put up on Marcus's stream? Hmm. I don't know. It's been a busy week for me, but I don't know. We could care less about care less about some drama. About Happy some birthday, drama. Esteban, by the way. Happy birthday. Yeah. Esteban turned uh his birthday was yesterday, right? Uh Superman Day? Super, yes, Super was it? Was yeah, Superman's, Superman's birthday too. Old now. Superman is, uh, what, 100 years old? I don't know. Shit, he's like 85 or some shit. When is he going to public domain? He should have already been. 14 years? Right? It's got to be 100, right? No, it's no. like 70, but there's like some kind of caveat on it that kept him kept him from being there. It's like I think he's like six years out. Mark Miller's already making plans to – uh. Yeah, he's like, dude, I, in, in six years, Superman will hit like public domain, and then he can write a Superman story, and he can hire the baddest-ass artists in the world. And being that they take a little bit longer to draw and stuff, he can hire him now, start doing it now, and have it ready by then. That's why, like, with the – um, what it was something that just went in? With the Mickey Mouse. The Mickey, that, really, that movie like, was filmed and ready. Yeah, the day you went into public domain, the trailer came out. <laughs> like that was that was wild. Let me see if I That's can funny. find this Mark Miller post. That was something I, I did. I was excited to see when he when he posted about that. You're 38 now. Wow, you don't look a day over 37, sir. You guys reading anything good? You guys hey, anything what, good this week? What, what kind of YouTuber are you? Me. 
Uh, I don't know. What kind of YouTuber would you describe me as? I'm just a guy. I'm just a squirrel in this world trying to get a nut to move <laughs> your butt. Let us move on. This is this is the kind of user. What you guys uh? You guys picked up anything interesting this week? Anything good you're reading, even if it's old stuff? I tried out that new Ghost Rider. You know we got a new we got a new host. No, I mean you're making that face, but same same guys on it. Benjamin Percy still writing it. It seems pretty dope. Seems pretty good. We didn't get rid of Johnny. He's still there. Like him, the spirit like being taken from him and going into the hood is like the angle of the story kind of deal. You know what I mean? But the hood being a son of a bitch has got me excited to see how that plays out. Hmm. What did I just finish reading? I had something just wrapped up. Oh, the madness from AWA Upshot. Mm. So I know you started reading it, Nick. Did you finish it? I have not. I need to pick up, uh, Issues three, four, uh, yeah, three through six I have to pick up. So I finally got issue number six in because it was a special order because of the variant that I wanted. Absolutely phenomenal. So I highly recommend it, man. The way it, like, obviously you read the first two issues. Yeah. I thought it was really good. It made me look forward to reading, getting the rest, so. It ends on such an emotional note. People in the chat, if you haven't heard about it, it's called The Madness from AWA Upshot. Uh, I guess the synopsis is it's um, a superhero with her powers. Like she has a bunch of powers, but she can only use one power at a time. So she's either super strong when she wants to use strength, but she's vulnerable. Like if she become, uses her invulnerability power, then she's not super strong or bulletproof. Or, oh no, bulletproof, that would be bulletproof. I highly recommend it. It is super, super awesome, man. The Madness. The uh, trade paperback should be out. You know what? I'm going to see this week if I'll... Pick up two. If it's out, I'll grab two trade paperbacks and give them away on the next episode of In the Mix. I the, madness. the Madness, yeah. It is freaking fantastic. Remy Q, are you um partaking in it? I know you don't do new comic book days. Are you picking up any old stuff? Uh, not this week. No, I didn't pick up anything, anything new. I did... Um, I did watch... Fallout. That and, is called a segue, sir. And uh, I retract all previous statements. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's fucking fun, isn't it? Angel and I talked about it last night. I was like, you know what? I watch it. I watched it. Uh, I'm only in episode two, but it is a. Uh, very entertaining. It's very good. So okay, so we're not gonna go okay. into we're, we're not gonna go into full spoilers. I Have didn't watch the whole thing. I haven't seen everything yet, but it is uh, it's a very good show. You guys favorite character so far? What's that? Favorite character so far? I don't. Again, episode two. I, I haven't. Well, they haven't really dug into any. Like they, they just. Uh, they just got into the dog and everything with the guy and the dog so far. So I, I'm mm. I feel like we're still exploring. Twenty thirty three. Uh, the whole thing in the in the vaults was pretty badass. That was uh, twenty thirty three. Wow, thirty three. That was that was pretty impressive. So, did you play the games, Trim? Uh, I, I, briefly, and I had zero interest in the games. So yeah, it's tough. Durs told me they suck. Yeah. No, there's a tattoo of the game. In back. fact, I even like because I played so little of the game. Angel's been playing Fallout Four. She started that this year, and I've I've watched her a few times, and I understood a lot of what was going on from that. But I mean, from like my own playing the game, I, it didn't it didn't mean anything. It wasn't like I remembered something. I was like, oh man, this is so good. Yeah, just like a J Cole album. <laughs> <laughs> It's just shit is just boring. The, yo, the, the game's boring. The, the show, Nick, are you fully caught up? You watched the whole thing? I watched the whole thing, yep. Yeah. All right, so without blowing anything up because we don't want to tell Remy about all the characters that die, um, what would you give it on a scale of one to whatever your rating scale is, sir? Uh, I would give it 
I wouldn't say the full four and a half, but I would give it four probably. Four out of five. Four full fingers I would give it. Four full fingers. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, so she's a loose one. We always oh, try to get the we always try to get the half one in. It's called the shot. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's a thumb away from full. full. <laughs> what would you give it, Mark, on a scale of one to whatever your scale is? I know you stole Dan Murrell's. It's definitely green. It's not like peat green, but it was it was green. I liked it a lot. I describe I it as it doesn't do anything great. It just does everything really good, which adds up. You know what I mean? It doesn't do anything that'll blow you away, but you'll just be completely happy from start to finish. Yeah, I watched it, thoroughly enjoyed it, watched it over the course of three days, which is rare. Like, I, it's rare for me to, like, binge a show because of all the shit that I got going on, going on and stuff like that. So I was able to watch it in, in the course of three days. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I think you hit it on the head, Mark. It's really, really good. It's not great. I wouldn't consider it like, oh, my God, you got to see Fallout. Like, it's really good. It's a really good show. It's a breath of fresh air. I love that they they are self-aware. It's a wacky-ass concept, and they leaned all the way into it, similar like Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal is a wacky concept, and they lean all the way into it. I thoroughly in- enjoy it. Um, my favorite character, I was going to say the ghoul, but the ghoul dies in the beginning of episode three, so... Mm. Oops! I'm I'm joking. The ghoul doesn't die. <laughs> yeah, but it, it like they're they're said it does mim- it mimics the game exactly where it's just wacky, it's wild, it's crazy, it's like insane. That ah oh, fuck. That's one of the strong suits to it is how quick it can change to little and nothing's overly like even the most dramatic of moments in it are still not overly dramatic because like you've gone through other things that are kind of zany and laughable at times. It's just a, it's a very unique show. It's a very unique world. It's a, it's a good blend of stuff. I, I, I back myself into a corner with that one, sir. Everybody, while you're here, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Uh, yeah, just make, I guess, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal was super good. Would anyone disagree with that? That Twisted Metal was good? I didn't watch it. Didn't watch it. Zero interest pass. I didn't watch it either, but I'll disagree for the fuck of it. None of you watched none of you watched Twisted Metal? None of you? I, I don't have the cock. You don't have the cock? I, you need the cock, bro. I have the cock, but after seeing the trailer, I was like, pass. Nah, you guys really? Yeah. No, nah, you gotta get you, you gotta get that the cock. I heard the cock type about the trailer and I watched it. I was like, There's I think everyone on the planet played Twisted man. Metal at this point. Yeah, the cock is the hardest streaming service. Is there any way to get the cock without paying for it? I, I, I did it. I could probably I slide you the cock. I did like the little <laughs> trial run, you know, and they give you some stuff, but they, if you give it more money, they give you a bigger, bigger. Oh, they give you uninterrupted cock. If how you many, yeah, how many the, profiles are you allowed to have? Cock if you give them more money. That's true. So if you do the trial, it's only like premature cock. Yeah, but if well, you do the whole thing, you get like a premature. You, get, you, you, you so, get a load of uh, good content. Right load. now, I'm only sharing the cock with one person. But if I'm allowed to share it with more than one. Again, no, I hear you get in trouble. If you share the cock outside your house, they, they just don't let you do that anymore. Mm. Yeah, the, the government is cracking yeah, down on sharing yeah. cock. All right, I think we played it out as long as we can. Of course. Yay, round of really applause important. for us for saying cock a million times. Oh, man. And shout out to our <laughs> constituents of the homosexual variety in the chat. We love you guys. Boom. I'll drink, I'll drink to that one. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. It's not my fucking birthday. The uh, big, big, big thing that happened this, uh, this past yesterday is Rebel hold up before Moon. before you get to that house of l couldn't get past twisted metal or fallout sir all right i'm sorry go ahead mark rebel moon part two scar giver the chopped up edited bullshit cut came out yesterday <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, you you joined right on time, dog. You joined right yeah, on time. What's up, Jim? Anything else? It came out to seven seventeen percent critic reviews, which is for the birds, but forty four percent fan fan reviews, which still is that's that's bad even for. And I'm I, I'm not going to spoil it, but that he literally had like a ten minute slow mo wheat chaffing scene. Wheat chaffing was that where they cut wheat. Uh, Can you just, uh, just define the word? <laughs> hit, him, hit him with the clip, DJ. Hit him with the clip. Uh, this guy, yo, just show us your college degree, bro. Like, hit him with the clip. Him. You never heard of Wheat Chaffing? I, I, we, we talked about this well before this released, and I posted it. But I'm I'm not, not watching this version. I'm waiting till August for the actual movie to release. It just seems so stupid to... Like you're, they're editing a film down to half its length after filming it. Like they didn't make this decision to edit it down when they were originally filming it, so it's not made to be edited down like this. You know what I mean? So there's no way to do it smoothly. So that speaks volumes that you're gonna skip out on this version. I'm diehard no, no, because I know like it's it's like it's. I'm like, ah, I want to watch it, but I don't want to watch a half-hearted piece of shit chopped up movie. If I want to do that, I'll watch the theatrical cut of the Justice League. Yeah. But no, in all sincerity, like it, it makes zero sense. Like, and I was, I was, man, I was thinking about it, talking to Durs and like, you know, like it's the trope, like it's Zack Snyder is kind of known for the trope of having the extended cut thing, but like the time it takes between making a decision like that and then putting it out, I think in that like it might have been might have been fun to do like right at the time of like Justice League coming out, you know. It might, but th this far out, like it's like the decision to do that versus how like the general fandom feels about that now has shifted so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like they're they're we're not we're done with the director's cuts. Give us the fucking movie, quit with the bullshit. Especially yeah, on a just, streaming service like Netflix. Like, how do you give a, a, a chopped up version on Netflix? Like, that's crazy. But even the Justice League wasn't originally intended to be that way. Like, that was no. just what we had. So That was unfortunate. Like, everybody it watched it because that was what the movie was supposed to be at the time. And then it evolved into the masterpiece that we know now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Ag, this is this isn't Snyder's decision to do this. So, like the for those that don't know, Snyder was given carte blanche by Netflix. Like, do what you want to do. He's like, for real, like, yo, do what you want to do. No limits, no anything. Make your story, not make a movie, not make a show. Just make it, whatever it is. Make it. I thought he was gonna say finish your story. I'm like, ah, stupid Cody yeah, Rhodes. I just said that on the stream. You you put that in the notes before we got here, but uh. So he made he made like a movie that's a little bit over six hours long. It's not necessarily a movie. It's just he made a six hour long story, cut it into parts, make it into episodes, do whatever you want to do with it. Netflix's bright idea was we'll make it into two condensed parts, and then we can release the director's cut later. That was Netflix call, and Zach's like, whatever, whatever. And he even said like he watched he watched part one that we all saw, and he said. That's that's not that's nowhere. You know, that's not it. That's it's not a good representation of what you'll see when the director's cut comes out. August, he said that shit is fucking trash. Yeah, he said that nicely. August. And remember what he said about the uh, the Justice League when he was asked like how much of that's going to be in your movie? He said not a fucking frame that they touched outside of my original vision. That's why it's so different. Not a wanna... fucking frame that they did without him made it into his cut nothing i want to imagine so, they show like him like him alone like his finished product and then he's got that like boogie nights burt reynolds thing where he's like i want this to be the film they remember me by <laughs> like, like i want i want to imagine that's how this goes down he'll like, be he'll he be realize his, his, his legacy is justice league period <laughs> I don't know. You said, but Boogie Knight said um, when he's just like, I'm not going to film you in the state you're in. What, California? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, but August, the, the full length is slated to come out as of now. No definitive date in August, but it's looking like August, and it's over six hours long. Whether, I hope they just drop it all. Drop That's it all. I mean. one, one, one ongoing thing. Let us watch it at our leisure. 100%. I just can't imagine. You're in, you're in the in, – in the meeting and you're Zack Snyder and he's like, yeah, oh my God, oh, six hours, you're gonna let me do whatever, this is my vision, here you go. And somebody's just like, I have an idea. How about two versions? We chop it up and then we put out the real one. <laughs> and somebody has to be like, fantastic idea, Bill, because you know it was fucking Bill. Fantastic idea. That's a fantastic idea, Bill. Um... If you direct your attention to the screen, I've made a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. Uh, <laughs> see if we divide the film up into several smaller parts, and then we can release the final cut later. Yeah, and to be fair, to be one hundred percent fair, no matter what the reception is of this, it's it's getting the views. It, it's it's getting the watches. It's it's like the critic and audience reception is one thing, but the fact that. People are tuning in. People are watching it. That first one did crazy numbers on Netflix. I'm sure this one will too, and I'm sure the director's cut will too. Yeah. See, now I want to go watch Boogie Nights. Great. Hi, Finn. Fantastic. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. What's popping, Finn? <laughs> Have you seen Boogie Nights, Finn? Okay. No, not yet. <laughs> it's a so great... Uh, enough. Ask him what Boogie Nights is about. Make him explain it to you. I don't even know what Boogie Nights is, so can you explain it to me? Uh, it's That's a time period film. The last shot the of the movie. 70s and now, the what, what DJ right in his face when he when he does? <laughs> <laughs> so, Boogie Nights, it's a movie about learning how to dance to disco music. So you boogie. That's what they used to call there dancing back in the day. Do you remember dancing? Yep. Yeah, look at all oh, Boogie Nights. Oh, look at Remy. Oh. I know how to disco. I know how people disco. They do this. Yep. Yeah. 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 Fantastic scene. Nice. And the so guy who does it, it's Did sharp. It cuts like razors. Cuts glass. Mm -hmm. Look where oh, I spotted out for daddy. Oh, hold on. Let me make you big. Oh, that's dope. Godzilla. I love it. I think Godzilla's King Kong. No, that's not. That's Godzilla. That's Godzilla. He's messing with you, buddy. He knows. And on the top, that's Mighty Joe Young. No, that's King Kong. No, that's not. That's Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> no. Well, that's wait, King Kong right there. That, that's King Kong, yep. And that's Mothra. No. <laughs> Austin LeMay in the house uh, while Austin is here. If you guys were on the fence about the Austin LeMay art print, uh, I don't know if anybody bought while we're here. Before getting on the show, there were only five left on the website. And uh, once we sell out, we sell out. We're not reprinting them again. So big shout out to Austin LeMay for his fantastic work and all the work that he's been doing with comics curing cancer. Link is in the chat. Buy your print now. Right. Is it okay to is it, is it okay to say fuck now? Yeah, you can say fuck. He's going fuck, fuck, cock balls, shit, <laughs> pussy dick. Um, that damn bill. Uh, X Men ninety seven. You guys want to transition to X Men ninety seven? Are we? Did we watch it this week? Nick, did you watch it? X Men ninety seven episode six. You either Remy Q. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, hell yeah! You watched it. I, I wasn't. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't gonna be nicked. I wasn't gonna be nicked from this part of the conversation. You, you know, what? what? <laughs> he said, "Now tell me what Boogie Nights is about." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, Boogie Nights. You could you could say Boogie Nights is a is a Thor movie because your boy's back in the hammer. <laughs> Oh shit! Well, it's a great movie, though, for real. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't I just know people are playing now. All right, yeah, watch it. Watch it. Happy. Damn good. Yo, when he's like, go into the fucking room and give me the fucking money out the floorboard, or the whatever. Go. I want you to go in the fucking room and take me the fucking money out of the floorboard. Oh. Thomas Jane with the fucking Jesse's girl and the fucking dude with the firecrackers. Chinese. 
<laughs> yeah, that movie. I'm like, oh man, now I want to watch Boogie Nights. Fucking Nina Harley just boning this dude in the driveway, and he's like, "Get the fuck out of here, Bill!" <laughs> just shooing little Bill away. I hate when that happens. X Men '97. What do you What do you guys think? X Men '97. Episode six. It's not a good episode, episode six. It wasn't. It was good. better than episode four. That's how we're measuring. But it wasn't as good now. as episode five. Was it better than the Marvels? Is that what we're doing again? No, 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 we're not doing that yet. Hold on. Let's 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 explain what episode six was about, or I guess kind of digest. It was like part two to Life Death. I don't understand why Life Death was a half of an episode. Um, episode four with Jubilee, and then it gets a full episode. Episode. Well, it, it wasn't a full episode. It was just like two stories going on at the same time. You got Charles Xavier's story, then you got uh, Storm's story. I don't understand why they chose to do the Jubilee thing and Life Death Part 1 as two separate things. I thought it was a very slow episode, except for when Storm was just like, I am Storm, lightning powers. I thought it was pretty lame. You know what happens to a frog in a lightning storm? <laughs> I like the, uh, the Xavier same, same class. That happened scene. Happened. I thought that was, that was pretty good. The ending. Yeah, Nick, uh, you care about spoilers? What episode are you on? Yeah, no, I can go. You saw I five, though. I haven't seen any. Oh, you! I, have- I turned it off halfway through episode one. That's why I said he, I, I didn't want to be Nick. He's been saying every week we do this. We talk about X Men, and Nick casually acts like it's okay that he's not watching it. Coming from a guy who's never watched anything we ever talk about ever. Right, but I watch, I-, <laughs> I watch it. When it's recommended, I watch it. Ozark. I'm in season two right now. I'm still struggling oh, through. I'm struggling through Ripley this week. Can somebody read Cliff's comment as Cliff? No takers. No takers. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Storm said, "I am the lightning," and reclaimed her motherfucking power like the damn queen she is. That's pretty good. That's my impersonation. Out of all the impressions you've done, <laughs> that's actually pretty good. I think you might have. I think you might have rogued some powers with that kiss. That King Kong kiss from Cliff. I think you rogued some kiss. Oh shit! <laughs> thank, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, I love Cliff. I, I did rogue some powers off of Cliff. I haven't seen a single episode of the. Oh damn, Walter Lemay. Damn. Um, Nick, I, you could legit just watch episode five. Like you don't even need to watch the whole thing. Okay. Um. Yeah, I thought the ending was cool. So what happened? Like Remy said, Charles Xavier was in a school. Like I don't know, doing this whole thing and the Shi'ar and blah blah, and. The way that he learned that the mutants died in real time. So that whole story is happening. Uh, it's running parallel to the story that's going on on Earth or to the happy nation, that story. So it's just like when they died, Xavier found out, like in the um, astral plane. And he was just like, oh, shit, I got to go back to I got to go back to my to my what they called it. The ghetto of the space, Earth, the ghetto the of the Milky universe, Way ghetto. The Milky Way ghetto, bro. They call Earth. 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 The ghetto. Yeah, fuck you. For those stupid Terrans. That was cool to hear them refer to people as Terrans that we already heard it in. Uh, we eat Terrans, boy! Or whatever this guy says. Uh, Go on now, Terrans, get! That was in the Madness issue six when I put it, uh, took the picture and put it in the chat. Where she t- where she told the uh, the dinosaur the dragon go on get um what would you what would you get what would you rate that episode Mark I didn't watch it no oh, shit I thought you said it was bad that's why I didn't watch it <laughs> are you the same guy that was just just like see it for yourself how many no, no. of you got no I've got a uh... Yeah, no, I'm just fucking I've got like this measuring stick that I'm watching this show by. Like, if the internet cares, I'll go watch it. But the internet didn't give a shit about episode three, 100%. four, or six at all. 
at all. Nobody. We're in we're in group chats with countless people. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, the entire Wednesday went. Nobody talked about it in any chat. Nobody. The entire Thursday went and Friday. Three days, not one person said a fucking word till I brought it up on a stream this morning. And then it's, well, Storm had a good scene. And then, like, the, if you're, we're all on social media. No one's posting, can you believe it? Oh, my God, this and that. They did for one, two, and five. So if I see something like that, I'll go watch it. Time is very limited for me these days, and I have nothing against the show. But just like with the original one, every single episode is not a banger. So I'm kind of just just catching the bangers. That's all. Well, you this gotta one, catch those bangers. There's a lot of bangers on the cock, by the way. The way that they're doing the this on one is it's a lot one. of like back. Yo, your eyes. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry, Ruby Q. This guy just fucked me up. The way you said that and your eyes rolled back. <laughs> you gotta go back and watch that. I'm sorry, Ruby Q. I'm sorry I cut you off. My bad. Oh, no, no, I was just saying the way the the format that they have this, it's a lot of like back and forth. So it's there, it's like they're trying to do multiple stories and everything. This one, though, the fact that they had because this is the first time that we see Xavier, and so that was that was like the big reveal, I guess, other than Storm. But uh, I mean, Xavier's kind of getting the business the whole episode, and then finally in the end, he starts to uh, you know. So kind of I don't re- do his own thing. I don't remember what episode three was. Was that the Mojo episode? No, that was the beginning of episode no, four. Episode three was the Forge. That no. wasn't life death, though. No. No, so episode three was the retro one? No, episode three was the Goblin Queen. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Episode three was like when like Mr. Sinister. Yeah, yeah, back yeah. Mr. Sinister in this episode, which I liked because again, I thought when they showed him the first time, they were sweeping it under the rug, and they've they've come back to this again. So at least they're trying to stay consistent with a bigger picture. But I mean, it's gonna be hard to hold up to episode five in six, but I thought it was again much better than four. So at least it's keeping me interested in the show for sure. Episode three was fire. I mean, that's not a joke because th- Izzy says three was Inferno. I really enjoyed episode three. It was action packed. I think that was the most action besides the massacre from episode five. That was the most action that we got. I thought, yeah, episode three was good. That was. A, I think I made it like a little bit over halfway through three. Didn't return to the, like I was trying to watch it work and got sidetracked and it didn't, didn't draw me in enough to go back and finish I think with the Jubilee episode or the first half of that episode that contained Jubilee, I think that was super out of place. That could have been episode two or something like that, like where it's just like, this This is just the beginning. Let's ease you into it and then bombard you with all the heavier stuff. And yeah, but like I think they, got it. they had to capture everybody. That's the thing. They they gave you that one, one and two banger episodes to get everybody into it because if they started slumping off then, then it's just you're going to lose everybody. Mm. All right. Um, I'm hoping it picks back up. Good. I think they've paced it appropriately. I'm, I mean, I'm expecting more. You know what I mean? It's gonna. It's it'll start picking up. It's like like Mark said. Not every episode is gonna be a banger. I didn't think this was as bad as four, but it was. You know, it wasn't the best. But again, I'm it, pretty it, it sure I read something where Bo DeMeo talked about the way that he structured the series, like because like like you can't have every episode be in game. You know, episode no, five was in game. You know, that was. That was next level, like on all all fronts. But he talked about how, like, uh, if y'all thought that was something, wait till episode seven or eight or eight and nine, something like that. So I know eight and nine. There we go. Yeah, eight and nine are supposed to be absolutely insane. I'm looking forward to what they got. So uh, if if the internet agrees He's, with that assessment, I'll go check it out. He said that on his OnlyFans, right? Yeah, yeah. Leo, what's up, Leo? Me in. Pause. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> um, so I want more cable. I know that. Has our definition of what bad and good does it still mean bad and good? Because the episode wasn't bad, but we're saying ah, it was bad. No, no. I, Is I it our definition? Is it our definitions? Are we just like? Are we just internet trolls? Are we just looking for the clicks? Are we using that kind of YouTuber? Using the term more loosely, I mean, that happens just as much as people say, yeah, I loved it. 
but no, but no, you, you didn't. didn't really know. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Most like most things like, most things are just okay. That's like when someone says, "Hey, that J Cole album is fire," and he's like, "No, it's not, bro." <laughs> uh, it was okay. <laughs> yeah, that shit was fucking trash. Be that shit okay. put me to sleep. I watched it, and then there was a couple parts where I was like, "Yes," and then I was like, "Eh." It had yeah, Gladiator in it. That was kind of cool. Gladiator's an awesome character to, to have in there. Gladiator's dope. Um, I expected him to come with like a deep like ass I said, voice. It's the fact that they had Xavier. Like when they showed Xavier, it's like, all right, now, okay, cool. Let's see. What Yo, I, I love when Xavier got up and then one of the Shi'ar dudes was just like, Magic Legs, Professor X, Magic Legs. That was my favorite part. Lieutenant Charles, Magic Lex. <laughs> oh, Nikki. Nikki, go to bed, man. Um, t- your joke was that bad. It was that bad? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you know when you cover your face, we can still see like half of your right eye. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> and you still went on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> all right, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yo, Death Deathbird was, was dope. Charles, you are walking. <laughs> Why is that so funny to me? <laughs> like, I see Gambit in my head movies. Oh, that's true oh. though. That's true. Listen, they, they they did. They like they had the big reveal. They open up the doors. You just see a shadowy figure, and then this guy walks out. He's like, oh. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed when they had to explain him walking. This exoskeleton makes me walk upright, or whatever he said. Oh, you mean when they went in the back room and he like gets out of the legs? To, like... <laughs> there you go. This... There you go. Uh, what's what's her name? Lalandra, Princess Lalandra. Mm-hmm. Princess Lalandra, wait till this exoskeleton gets busy tonight on our wedding night. If you guys want some good X Men, this is what you need to be reading. What is that? What is that? Talk to us. Talk to this us. Is the dark, the dark Phoenix saga. The storyline that got me into comics. You want to talk about badass? You have a fight in here between Colossus and Gladiator. Mm. On the the blue spot of the moon. This is what you need to be. You like that X Men? No contest. Ten out of ten times, Gladiator. Yeah, he was Gladiator. Yeah, hell yeah, Gladiator's dope. Um, all right, let's 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 wrap up X Men ninety seven. Let's move along. Transformers one. Transformers dropped the trailer. Was it yesterday? The trailer was yes. Was it delivered from space or it was like brought up to space and shown and broadcast from space or something? It was something. I don't know dumb. how that works. I just watched it on YouTube. <laughs> there you go. You didn't have to wear your bubble helmet? No, no. Watch it in an oxygen rich environment. <laughs> nice. It was rainbow bright, Gary. Get it right. <laughs> Why was that hilarious? What's up, Warlord? Transformers one. It was it's a trailer. It's uh hell yeah, it was. Super prequel to when Transformers uh Optimus Prime wasn't even called Optimus Prime. What was he called? Or Orion Pax. Orion Pax, yeah. Orion Pax and Megatron. Was Megatron his name? D16. D16. So you got Orion Pax. Let's 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 make you big right there. Look at that. Oh man. Uh it's it's showing when they before they even got their transforming powers. It's a kid's movie. Um it kind of feels weird, right? So like I watched yeah, it what yesterday when when we went out to dinner, we pulled into the parking lot of the restaurant, and I handed Finn my phone and told him to hit play. And I sat there and watched hey, Good timing. Come here, kid. And I watched his face while he watched it. What did you think of the Transformers trailer tonight that you saw? Good. Wait, what Transformers? <laughs> the one that you watched in the car on my phone. The commercial for the new good, movie. Good. Oh, and they have Megan Freedom. Okay. Go. You served your purpose. D16. Oh, you guys. Oh, I get that. I get that, J Man. Explain that. That's a a reference. Jesus. It's 
it's supposed to be canon with the new movies, which include Bumblebee and Rise of the Beast. You know, that's the new franchise. It's oh, it is. Be, yeah, it's supposed to be canon to that, going back to Cybertron, to back when Megatron and Optimus were still brothers. You see the quintessent coming, the ones that kind of like they're creators, you know, like in uh, that aspect of it. I'm really excited for it. It looks like it. There's some bits of that that look kind of heavier, you know, like when I was talking about before he was Megatron and you see him dropping the Decepticon symbol. It looked like it was just forged and him on his knees, like in front of a dead, uh, dead Autobot or something right mm -hmm. in front of him. Like this shows there's some heavier stuff in there, but it definitely looks more lighthearted and not. I guess it's going to be, I don't even know how far it's going to go. Like if we're going to see him become Megatron and see him split from Orion Pax, or if that's just going to be like a glimpse into the future or what, but uh, I, I, I like the concept of it. You know, I take these kids to see movies all the time. So it's cool to have one that like, like that, that I'm excited for that kind of like, you know what I mean? It just, mm -hmm. I like the idea of Hemsworth and the dude from the, the Godzilla franchise doing Megatron mm -hmm. voice and key key and Michael key is doing, B and I don't know it just, it just seems like it's well made well put together I think they got I think they got people that care about it doing it so I think it could be as good as it can and the important part is it doesn't speed up or slow down anything from the main movie universe so if you're like why are they doing one for kids well be it doesn't doesn't affect in one way or the other the release of the Transformer GI Joe movie that's slated for next summer you know like that's mm -hmm. still still rocking this is just an in addition to if you want it yeah, and I think the important part too is uh, first of all, I hope Peter Cullen is in it because without Peter Cullen in it, in way some way, shape, or form, to me, it's not a Transformers movie. But from what I understand, Hemsworth worked with Cullen to get Optimus's voice down, so that that's pretty cool too. Yeah, the designs kind of caught me off guard at first. You know, like the Orion and D sixteen designs are like the face and kind of like almost look like more like a helmet on and stuff. I'm like. The bodies obviously just look like an animated rendition, but the head just looked off. But then when you see in the trailer, because they give you a good bit in the trailer when the contestant kind of give them the spark, it gives them the ability to transform. To transform. You see them kind of update into that more recognizable stuff. But I, I get people's up being upset with it, like with what we were told going into this. We had no idea of the lighthearted nature of it, you know, or anything like that. Yet we had no idea one way or the other. And Izzy pointed out with the name being Transformers 1, it really had people thinking Gen 1, you know, but they, that, we have Gen 1 yeah, why would we already. They did that with Bumblebee. They did that with Rise. They're, they're doing Gen 1 stuff already. So this is pre-Gen 1. It has to be. Yeah. So originally when I saw the poster, someone put it in the chat and I, I saw it. I think it was TM Nerdy. And I was just immediately, I was like trash. The poster or the thumbnail on the video it looked horrible. Then I watched it, it and great. I was just like, holy shit, I, I'm going to eat my hat. Uh, yeah. it, it looked dope for a kid's movie. It looked amazing. It gave me Super Mario vibes where it's going to be kitty, but have some adult content in there, meaning not, not adult content, Boogie Nights style, but yeah. meaning like things that the adults could gravitate to and the heavy, heavy content, emotional yeah. beats. I thought it was amazing. Like get past Optimus like Prime's thing. mouth. It looked about for the same age range or same wide range of age, ages that this, the movies do. You know, there's definitely some kitty jokes. You know, Pete Davidson was Mirage and it was just little, you might not laugh at it, but they're cracking jokes and saying goofy stuff the whole time. And that caught me off guard. Yeah, that caught me off guard too in the trailer. And it's supposed to be like a kitty cartoon. And he goes, Badass Tron. I was just like, Wait, who's this movie for? So the same thing. Yeah. Um, Rem, you didn't get, you didn't get a chance to see her. Uh, I watched it. Oh, so what do, you, what do you what do you think, dog? Zero interest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I love you guys. I just, you know what? I think I have. I've just lost interest in Transformers. I can't help it. You know, I lost interest in Star Wars some time ago. Um, you know, I, I I I hope it's good for everybody. I, I'm just not interested in it. It's, I hope your kids want to see it and you just kind of get to catch it just naturally kind of thing and hope you get to enjoy it that way. You know what I mean? If it's good, you know, if it's yeah. good, I hope it, it passes your passes in front of you some way. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, like nothing against, uh, I don't have anything like, Oh, I didn't like this or that. I just, uh, 
Yo, that's most people are hating on it. You're not gonna lie. Most people are mad. Well, that's I, what I mean. I, I wasn't people. like, I, I wasn't Why? invested in enough to be mad about it. So it's again, I hope it's fun for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't think I've ever been more interested in Transformers uh, you know, with the Energon universe firing off like it has. The Last Rise of the Beast movies being a blast. Can I pause you right there? This is the timeout. This is the universal symbol for a timeout recognized on all sports fields. That's a full timeout. Dude. That's a full timeout. What's what's the thirty second timeout? What's that? What's that thing? How's this timeout? Timeout. Yeah. Uh, nobody says that. Everybody's like, oh, team, 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 team. shoulder pads. Yeah, you're right. Nobody says that because it's a gesture. <laughs> damn, damn. Nick I feel like him. that's what Caesar tells the other apes. Like, <laughs> and then they know, <laughs> and then they fucking hide over there, like uh, apes together. Strong. Okay, Doctor Zayas, we get it. <laughs> I totally forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. Oh, Energon. So you're talking about Energon universe is mm -hmm. firing on all cylinders. Is it though? Is it firing on all cylinders? Is it? Yes. I disagree. Tell me why. Tell me Tell why. Me why. Hey, nothing Megan, huh? what, what's, what's missing for you from it? Happy Nation. It's not university enough. It's not university enough. It's the Energon Universe, but Void Rivals is over here doing Void Rival things. Transformers is doing Transformers things. Duke is over here doing Duke things. Are you all are you all caught up? Yeah. You're, what you're am I missing? Up. I'm I'm caught up. Uh -huh. What so, am I missing? So first, you now Void Rivals is Easter egged every single issue with Transformer stuff up until it coming back, right? Like yes. one through six had a Transformer Easter egg in there. And this whole time we've been wondering where does this take place? Where does this timeline? Then you had Cobra Commander giving us where Megatron is like where you know they had Megatron and Cobra Law. Megatron and then he has the Energon stuff and the and then, you, know, you know Duke is spinning out of the pages of Transformers issue two specifically. And yes, which, which Duke is Duke is my favorite uh my favorite series. Now now the issue five of Duke is the last issue of it because there's just many Cobra and Duke are mini series that go for directly from those into Scarlet and Destro, which those both just got set up in the most recent issue of each, with one issue to go. The finale of Duke promises partial timeout. <laughs> you know, that reveal of Destro on the last page of Cooper Command, the fire! And you know, Duke's already like uh, like being tracked down by Mars. That's who's like sending mm -hmm. people after him. So those already connected already in that aspect, but they're going deeper into it with the second arch. You know, they're, I guess they're not burning through too fast, but I will tell you did you just call it an arch? Arc. When you read the free comic book day Energon Universe special, that is the every every single page turn in that is a oh shit for Void Rivals, for Cobra, for Transformers, for Duke. So how did all. how did you read this? I, I I know people that know people that rob people. I don't know what to tell you. Oh <laughs> shit, dog. You don't know you don't share with the group. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, that's like this is so masterfully done. When you read that, you're like, "Holy shit!" Like I was, dude, I was like pacing. I'm like, "Let's go!" You, but you it all, murder? straight murder. It all comes together like butt cheeks. It's already all there, but you see how they just. Set That's it what up. I'm waiting for. They set it all up to be explosives, and the void rivals hook. If you're a Transformers fan, you're about to freak out when you see like which direction they're going because you know how. Like everything is uh, redone. They're not following the original timeline. It's an all new introduction. So what you see and who's like kind of looking for somebody kind of thing, you're like, this is about to be, this is about to be badass. Read, read, pass, Mark. You know the rules. Remy Q, go. See, they have the golden arch. We have the golden arch. <laughs> they have the Big Mac. We have the Big Mac. <laughs> I would have said the big mark, but no, yeah, dude. but it's, it's my buns have no seats. So good. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? <laughs> oh shit! That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the big giant crossover. I know there's the seeds. Uh, oh, seeds! Wow, 
there's some Easter eggs and all that stuff. I'm just waiting for the big crossover. And then, you know, I, I don't know, man. I'm just waiting for yeah, the big crossover. You're waiting on the Joes to have to rally up and run with Autobots to fight some Decepticons and Cobra people. Like, like you're looking for an event area. We're, we're, not, we're not there yet. You know, it's kind of like That's what, what – you know, how Jeff Johns was talking about like, like we're like, does that, does all this obviously lead to all these ghosts? Ah, the ghost machine universe. Now that's the universe, sir. All cylinders and then some. Like, you know, how he was talking. We we asked him like, so obviously all these characters are going to get pieced together and go to try to prevent the unnamed war from kicking off. And he's like, I'm not going to say one way or the other, but you have to build to these things so that it has weight. That's what's happening with Energon. They're, they they. It's so early in it. Think about it. We're still in the, we're still in the first arc of each of these issues. The introduction to the characters for each issue, but because they're like familiar properties, we expect, we know so much already. But they don't care. They're still introducing it like it's brand new to whoever's reading it. You know this right here. Starscream is deader than shit. Yo, <laughs> legit. Yo, poor Starscream. We, we, we can we can work together. Soundwave didn't care. He just kept on. Bong, 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 bong. He, no, he, did. he did like that too. Bob. Yeah, he said you kill <laughs> Yo, Oh shit! He got a mad gunshot residue all over his hands. Pepperoni because the fan smells delicious. What? Kyle came in here, sitting down, having some a little bit of pepperoni, and an Italian sandwich. Me. Um, all right, let's move along. I, yeah, I just, I don't know. And John, I, I guess I'm waiting for, for the, the second arch. Yeah. When you get, when you get to the, uh, when you get to the free comic book day book, it'll get you that excitement back. And yeah, then yeah. I, expect, I expect Destro and Scarlet to be about the same pace as Duke and Cobra have been, but we need that Destro one to really like bind together Cobra and everything else with like the technology and everything. Cause mm -hmm. you have to, you have to create a world where these people can run against the Transformers, and without Mars Industries, you don't have that. They With Cobra, they showed us the energy source. They showed us how the doctor that's been tied up has actually found a way to half-ass refine it to create weapons and vehicles and stuff like that okay. that are next-worldly. So we got that. We figured out how Mars could do it. Now he added some cut to it. He added, he added some cut. Yeah, you got you to cut. Yeah, step on it a little bit. <laughs> Yo, he's, he's stepping on the energy on, which is yeah. crazy. Oh shit! Um, all right, I'm sorry for a sidetrack with the Transformers stuff. Now I'm hype again. You see, I'm like, yo, that shit is trash. I'm like, super hype. Uh, I got some movie news, and then we'll close out the evening. Heavily rumored, Sydney Sweeney being rumored for the role of Black Cat. I was against it. Why? And then, what? and then, and then, someone gave me two good reasons that I should be for it. The left and the right one. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Damn, why the, don't I have this like more handy? Sydney Sweeney. So they're completely scrubbing Madam Web from any comic would any comic book uh <laughs> you even spelled it wrong, dog. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> Tidies! <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> he spelled cock super right. How do you feel about this uh, su supposed rumor casting of Sydney Sweeney as Black Cat? Nick's looking at his lips, so let him answer first. <laughs> I know. Yo, somebody screenshot. Uh, I, 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 Nick's, is it just me or Nick? Nick is frozen. I'm down for Sydney Sweeney and anything. I just don't give a shit to watch whatever Marvel's putting out. Okay. You don't have to screenshot. He screenshot himself. Remy, what do you think about... Uh, yeah, Nick is freezing. What do you think about this uh, casting? Oh, it's supposed to rumor. Oh, Sydney Sweeney fan is as well. <laughs> it does look like Nick is being massaged by the Infinity Gauntlet. It looks like he's rubbing his shoulder. Brian agrees with Nick. And Nick said, ding, 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 ding. Um, yo, Street Side Anthony the God. What's up, dude? Good to see you. Thank you for coming out. Um, 
Is it too soon to have a spider character introduced to a different Spider-Man universe? Does it matter? Oh, they're like legit like getting Madam Web the fuck up out of here, right? Was it ever in here? Yeah, I was going to say. Yes, yeah, it was never in here. It wasn't, it wasn't MCU canon from the jump, so it doesn't really super upset doesn't really about matter, right? All the Madam Web fans are going to be in an uproar. I know, right? Like, that's my Spider Woman. She didn't even get to wear the costume. Oh, oh I, I misread that. I misread that, Artem. Uh, all right, so that's that news. I, I guess that's a pretty good casting. Um, what else we got? Red Hulk. So Red Hulk was for the longest rumored to be in Captain America 4, which is shaping up to be a Hulk story. Uh, Red Hulk, the first official kind of reveal was last month where a person on set was wearing a jacket that had the Red Hulk's hand crushing the Captain America shield or whatever. And then today, a toy website revealed or uh, yeah. that was McDonald's, was McDonald's unveiled. Toy. Yeah, unveiled that Red Hulk was part of the um, like the it toy line. Plush keychains almost, oh, but it didn't just reveal that. It revealed the villain of the movie. Put on your butt, Casa Marvel, the South American female version of Diamondback. What? Cas Casa. Bro, the, you're saying what because you heard me correctly. Makes zero fucking sense. Who? Exactly. <laughs> even even Cliff's like, who the fuck is this? All right, hold on, wait a minute. Can it's you repeat yourself? The crowd. Can you repeat? <laughs> Can you repeat yourself, sir? No. Y'all heard me correctly. No, I, I did it. I thought you sneezed. No, Casa Marvel. How? C A S A M A V L. Like. I'm gonna have to pull it up to show you because it's that yeah. asinine. It is so yeah. fucking ridiculous. And this is the main villain of this. Hey, look at that! All right, hold up. What do you feel about? Because we totally missed everything you said about Sydney Sweeney as Black Hat, supposed black. First of all, yeah, the Wi-Fi took a very opportune moment to catch me licking my lips to freeze me while you asked me that question. <laughs> Bro, mad screenshots, dog. Mad screenshots. But I mean, what you want out of Felicia is sexiness, and I think she exudes that. So let's see. I'm the the way her eyes might look in the mask might be a little bit off-putting, but I'm for it. The internet loves parts of Sydney Sweeney. Word up, Taylor Winder. T-Dubs in the house, ladies and gentlemen, as well as Mike Beckerman. So we're bringing up Casamigos. What was the name? Can I put this? Uh, is there room in StreamYard to put it? the picture in here? Is that bro, the, uh, we're on the I professional account, bro. The, the I'm on stream. Stream. There wasn't room. That, yeah, okay. You're about to force DJ into the two hundred dollar one. I was just gonna say oh, that. I thought you meant you were sharing your screen, dude. You didn't have to do all of that, now. That was a lot easier. Oh, Casa Vic, Casa. Oh fuck Casa this! Dude. That's Casa uh, Portu Del. Portuguese, no? Yeah, it's Casavel, which translates to rattlesnake. So it's the uh, female version of Diamondback. I don't speak Portuguese. I can speak English. That's your, that's your MCU Captain America 4 villain. That's terrible. So, well, I thought they, they split it up. Like that was the leader supposed to be the main one. It's basically a Hulk like, movie. Yeah, so what yeah. I'm assuming so is because we have the Thunderbolts coming, which obviously Thunderbolt Ross as the Red Hulk goes into, uh, she'll be your throwaway for this movie, primary. Luder is going to be present in it, how much he's going to be the main villain, who knows. He might just be there because you need a catalyst to create the Red Hulk. Because hmm? he's not, Daniel Stearns doesn't have to be a villain, he can just be present. And they added an asterisk to that movie too, didn't they? Like the official title for that movie is Thunderbolts with an asterisk, which is weird to me. 
Unless it's they just updated change. it to an asterisk, which Kevin Feige has no comment on. Oh, they'll probably just change it. Unless it's mm-hmm. going to be... I, I don't know, man. I, mm-hmm. It's hard to get excited about any of this stuff. Ah, oh, man. All right, that's that. That's that. Digger Jim, and then we're going to give this thing away. Digger Jim had asked earlier about the developments and stuff that we've been seeing with James Gunn's Superman movie. Are we getting excited by like the logo reveal, seeing them reading action comics and Superman comics on set, seeing more pictures of Corn Sweat and whatever her name is, Ms. Maisley, Ms. Maisel? Are we any more excited in these last couple of weeks about Superman? I'm anxious for a trailer. Yeah. And I don't know how much, like, I don't, I don't know, like, Mm. It dude, that's such a. I'm so scared for the DCU. I'm like, I, I'm excited, but I think that my nervousness just supersedes all that excitement. Everything like they're taking all the right steps, but we're not removed from the previous universe yet. We're not. There's no distance. There's no time. There's, there's like you're forcing a reset button. Like, why? Why do you have to be so active on social media? You should have done like a blackout thing with this whole project. Not respond, not talk, not post shit. Don't do anything. Just cast announcements, if that. Like, don't even make those public. If people discover them, let them discover them, and then just drop a trailer on people. I agree 100%. There's not enough distance between the old universe and this universe. People, they're they're doomed. They're doomed. No matter what they do, they're going to be doomed. And I don't want them to be doomed. Remy Q Studios of Remy Q Studio fame, and this Q stands for Quinzel. I found that out. Go. I know we're past this, but I just want to point out in my brief research on Diamondback from Captain America uh, 310 from 1985, uh, her skills are listed as, her abilities are listed as skilled and throwing sharp diamond tips and a skilled gymnast. I'd be very happy, very happy for her to be my super villain. I'd be rich after that fight. Yeah, there you go. Like you just run away and hope she like stabs you with diamond tips and then you, you fucking... catch a few in the back, you know, and just go home, pull pull them out and you're set. I know. Imagine that. Uh, you like ten million dollars. Uh, Jake's on you, bitch. I know we were past it. I'm sorry, but I had to no, look that good, up. I was, I was curious. I was curious. Then the, it's just like I'll, the only way that this, and we've talked about this before with the public perception is everything when it comes to a successful franchise. You have to have like the general audience on your back. And this movie has to be amazing. It has to have a, a reasonable budget and you have to let it perform medium. Don't expect it to do gangbusters because everyone's jaded and, you know, the internet loves to hate on shit and that just drives people's excitement levels. But it has to come out and people have to skip it and hear how good it is, watch it at their own leisure later and regret not seeing it in theaters. And you have to be able to financially burden that and then make your next one and probably have the same thing happen again. But people regret missing it in theaters and then the next one and it has to be good also and people start going to see them. You have to take some L's with winning projects to win back over people's favor. That is true. So I want to ask you, sir, as the president of the DC contingent, have the DC fans already started putting together their pleas and excuses for when the DCU fails? No, to be honest with you, like the the, the, the internet DC fandom is split. Like there, you got the ones that are like, I'm going to trust. Let's see what gun does and everyone else who everything that's announced, everything that's said, the paw kit and maw kit casting that was announced this week, just more nails in the coffin. Just everything James Gunn does, just this is why this is stupid. He, he's just, he's going to ruin DC. It's just the hat part. Go. <laughs> so the reaction to the maw kit and paw kit casting, was that not well received? That dude, I, I'm not familiar with the, the the older lady, but that guy is a fantastic actor. Um, I forgot his name, but he was a dude in Identity with the eyes. He was the priest in Constantine who drank himself to death. Yep, he was him. He's a fantastic actor. Yeah. 
So was Helen Hunt. Why didn't we cast her for Paw Kent? Kevin Costner. Let's do Kevin Costner. I wouldn't say Helen Hunt for Paw Kent. I mean, it's 2024. Kevin Costner. God, why'd you have to bring that up again? He was a fantastic Paul Kent. <laughs> he was tremendous, man. He he, he was tremendous. Yeah, I, I, got, I got a clip dedicated to Paul Kent right here. <laughs> what could possibly be funny? I put the diamond in the coat. And I put the coat on her! I would say Billy Zane, but Billy Zane never ages to look old enough to be a Pa Kent. No, yeah, Billy Taylor's Zane. Right. People, people are mad about the S, and I, I get that, man. I completely get it. How? Hold on, time out, time out, time out. No, seriously, I didn't hear any. I guess I'm because I'm not in the heavy DC circles. I thought the S was dope. Is the Kingdom Come S? Are people mad about the 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 S? The Super Yeah, because because DC fans know that that Kingdom Come S isn't. That's. Bro, I'm a Kingdom Come Stan, and I don't fucking understand that. I don't understand that, it because that's an Elseworld story. That's not. It's not even that. That represents as a as a Superman guy, as a DC guy. That S represents. That doesn't represent early Superman. That's almost like you know, like uh, when Superman died, you had the black armband. You know, like when you wear something in in memorial of something. That S was there with blacked out and just a slash through it. Like, you know what I mean? It means something specific to that story, to that era of Superman. Like, but so that's, it's fucking weird to do it. Granted, it's not the kingdom come S what we have is a collage of numerous S's in the past, even back to like the Fleischer era, the original OG cartoon Superman, like it's yellow on the inside. It's yellow outline. So you can see where it's, inspired by a lot of stuff so i'm trying to find ways to think like if if this is what we're really fucking doing how do we make this make sense we know james gunn has teased a lot of like uh, kingdom come reading that he did early on and maybe he's thinking long game here you know like maybe that's that's the symbol that he comes to earth with that's the kryptonian symbol for hope and that's what he originally started with and when someone says it looks like an s maybe he Maybe he updates it to something we're more familiar with, and that explains why when in the future he goes away, he returns with the OG symbol. You know, maybe it's adding a retcon to something like mm -hmm. maybe you know, to counterbalance it. Otherwise, you just want to shake the guy. Like, yeah. But uh, devil's advocate, as a casual fan, no, no one is going to, Casual fan like, anymore, the fuck that is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's gonna be oh snap, they changed the ass cool because they're gonna be like, okay, they couldn't use the Henry Cavill ass, you couldn't use the Christopher Reeve ass, they have to set the, set themselves apart. Motherfuckers never even heard of Kingdom Come. Well, all the way back to Kirk Allen, the S has always been slightly different. Kirk Allen, George Reeves, Christopher Reeve, uh Dean Kane. Fucking, I think the only ones that were like spot on the same was the Superboy TV show and Christopher Reeve because the Sal Kinds produced both. You know, I think that's the only time it's ever been the exact same. Even Brandon Roth's S was kind of condensed to his miniature sized chest and everything. And it was like off the suit. It looked really cool and shit. Brandon Roth could have definitely eaten a sandwich back then. You know, drank some fight milk or something. Shout out, shout out to milk. Brandon Roth. What the hell is fight milk? That sounds kinky. It's made. It's made by bodybuilders for bodybuilders. Mm, I'll, I'll take mother's milk. It's made with uh, real bits of crow. Nice embolism or whatever. What it was? <laughs> Waiting on the light bulb to light up for Nick. Yeah, what's what's the uh, what's the word? So which word? Embolism. You're setting yourself on fire. Oh. Immolation. Immolation. Got gotcha. This has plaid in it. <laughs> Let's give away these books again. We're going to get out of here. So, ladies and gentlemen, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight books that I have had lying around here, all in Mylar. Um, so, just eight random books. So, we got uh, the new Teen Titans, number 34. Oh, yes. Bloodshot, number zero, foil uh, embossed cover. Well, that's cool. Fantastic Four official Marvel index to the Fantastic Four. Number nice. one. That's Jack Kirby, right on the cover? 
Hey. Bunch of floating heads. Oh, the best kind. Marvel Age number 20, Letters to Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars. Uh, Nubia, the Amazon's number one, dope cover. Marvel Team Up, uh, Spider Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy, number 86. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, Superman starring in Action Comics number 528. 528. <laughs> and then Oni double feature, Blood Man and Chronic. Oh, hell yeah. When you said some random ass books, I don't think I've ever seen <laughs> a group of more random ass books. We underestimated you. Yes. Yeah, that is, that is some random books. So I bought um something. I, I just did a mail unboxing. <clears throat> from exec collects that mail and a l e no m m a m a i l and like he included some random books i bought two of his exclusives that he dropped uh, freya uh sort of freya whatever it was called yeah so put in the hashtag exec hashtag exec and that's for exec collects my guy um we'll, we'll ship this worldwide uh, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll ship whatever um if you if you're blocked i'm not shipping you shit. <laughs> so what do you what do you guys got going on this weekend uh let's start with Wormy q studios what do you got going on this weekend man not uh youtube related stuff but just life stuff what do you got going on brother you're muted dog hopefully nothing <laughs> Hopefully nothing. I'm gonna get a lights out gummy and enjoy my night. Thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah. 120 <laughs> milligrams of sweet, sweet juju. That's amazing. That's what I'm talking about. What about you, Nick? What, what are you gonna what are you planning on doing? Uh, well, I am I am fortunate enough to be the father of a new honor society member. So congratulations. We're going to be uh, celebrating Elijah's uh, inductment into that. And uh, I have to go. Uh, he's also got a uh, violin tryout tomorrow for some concert symphony. And I have to go pick up a hydro dipped deer head at some point. Nice, Remy Q. That's a Texas what, shit. <laughs> what does that feel like, Nick? To be proud of your son? <laughs> like, what's that like? Just so you don't look at him like, golly, I'm glad. No, I, still, I still look at him like that yeah, from time good. from time. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. That's awesome. I still have those, like, what are you doing, kid? Moments <laughs> more often. But, uh, yeah, that's a good feeling. I'm just filled with disappointment. No, I kid. And in the same sentence, he'll, he'll just leave the house to go to school in the morning and won't even say bye. For real, he's like that. Is, is he too cool for school yet? No, is he, he that age? Because he's what thirteen. He'll be thirteen in May. No, he's not even thirteen. He's tall as hell. He's taller than I am. Has, has he has he put his paws on you yet? Has he said, no. "Yo, relax, old man. You're gonna get these paws." <laughs> no, no. Oh, no, I I remind him that he may be taller, but he can still get it. Uh, you know, put the gear. Yo, you gonna get these? You gonna get these paws? Three, three times a week, Nick just gut checks them. Yeah, I gotta keep them in check. <laughs> EJ, how did the whatnot con go? Whatnot con? Thank you for thank you for I, asking. I, I'm glad you remind. I'm glad you reminded him because I was very disappointed. I didn't see one of these that whole night. Yeah. Um. Whatnot con? Happy Nation. It was okay. I, I did. I did all right. So I did um, better than what I thought I was going to do. Uh, you know, a lot of the same people that come out to support. So big shout out to you, Mark. Were there? Nick was there. Remy was there. Uh, Cliff was there. Uh, Durs, like a bunch of um, the regulars, Beckerman, in in the chat. Uh, I think we had cl close to thirty people at one point, which was a peak for me. Um, made over you know four hundred and change. So I think I made like four hundred and something after fees and all that. It came out to seven. Uh, I'm. 
$373. And I have instant payout. So literally right after the show, printed out all my labels and my money was in the bank. So that's dope. But the next day it got me to thinking about whatnot and about like all the hoops that you have to jump through. And then I wasn't, I was just like, I don't know. So I recorded a video about my particular whatnot experience, which drops on Monday. It's available now for all channel members. So I don't know if you were trying to team me up for a plug to talk about or you were le- legitimately asking. But I don't know if I want to continue on, on the platform, man. I don't know. Well, they it's did give just, you a whole bunch of nice swag, but I guess that doesn't equal out to all the work and stuff you got to do. Like you said, all the hoops you got to jump through. Yeah, So so my main thing is they did send a box of free comics and I sold those comics. And even if each one went for a dollar, it was still profit. Right. So I, I got a, a lot of comics and that went out to the people for a crazy, crazy discount. Like Durs had told me. So one of the books that we put up was the beneath the trees where nobody sees the um, grateful dead homage. I have four copies of those. Each of them went for 13 or $14, four copies. So in other streams, they're going for like 70 bucks, 67 bucks. 70 bucks. So it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense why people are overpaying for these for these books. I don't know. Would I like to have made $67 on that book? Yeah. So why 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 didn't I? I don't know. It's just weird. Like like from stream to stream, from person to person, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> You have you have a dynamic though in some of those in some of those uh, streams where there's the competition aspect. Yeah, you know, I especially was music. On, yeah, I think I think the the short time frames and the competition against a lot of people leads to a lot of FOMO, which drives the prices. Yeah. So and there's says, streams, uh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. Go ahead. Like you have a lot more level-headed people. Like it's a whole bunch of people in our community who know what's mm-hmm. up and don't necessarily fall victim to the FOMO. So, yeah. So there says I was playing music before DJ on shows. Uh, you will know after you watch this video. <laughs> There's also was playing J Cole, so that's why everyone left his streams. Hmm. Um. Yeah, it's not, it's just weird, right? And then even the thing like with the giveaways, you give stuff away. Um, like, what do you call them? The Givy Goblins and stuff like that? It's like, yo, spend some Prize money. lizards. Prize lizards or Givy Goblins. Like, you win something, spend some money. Do a, throw a tip, a $5 tip or something like that. This is, don't just go in streams just to kind of like, just win as much free shit as possible. Nerd, like, you saw to you, bro. <laughs> no, I'm talking to talking Nerd to anybody. Ran the whole video series that was going for once a week off shit. He was scoring for free off whatnot. Durs is the man. Uh, yeah. What happens is you have to contribute to the ecosystem, right? And that's how you get the ecosystem going. So if you win a stack of books and that books equ- is equivalent to 20 bucks, know that the person that's giving you those books, not only are they paying for the books, then they got to pay for the shipping on it because whatnot doesn't cover that shipping. Throw them, throw them a couple of a couple of dollars in the tip or something like that, four or five dollars. It's, I mean, it's it's just the right thing to do, in my estimation. This is my whole thing, and I, I mentioned to you, I think maybe you should do, do like I do and put up a sales page, take pictures, and and do it that way. I I don't, I don't like the dynamic of having people I know come in and buy me stuff, buy stuff off of me and like whatnot because they they're essentially paying whatnot Charity. for whatever. I'd rather have somebody come to me and say, hey, I like this book. I want to buy this book for a dollar, mm-hmm. even though I have it listed for 15 Then somebody buy it off me and whatnot. Because mm-hmm. essentially yeah. you're paying an unnecessary middleman for nothing. Yeah, no, 100%. Actually, I like the, the streaming aspect to it. I like the playing music and all that stuff. But with the bigger shows, yeah, the bigger shows will support each other, right? So you'll see – people in the shows just buying stuff and then they're going to buy it just to resell it. And they do it. They do that in the sinker community where someone will go out and buy somebody's entire thing. And then that person will then buy their entire thing. So it's, it's keeping that ecosystem going. Um, literally have a playlist called giveaway goblin. My, there you go, man. There you go. I know now when I, when I pack up your windows, just know I'm cursing you all the way. <laughs> oh, two dollars super chat. Here is two bucks to the ecosystem. Dale of suspense. Appreciate you, dog. Um, I, 
I have to go to the dentist, man. I'm getting like tooth pain. Nick, when are you going to throw another garage sale? Those, like doing them regularly fizzle out, but how you, like, man, a couple of them went really good. I, I moved a lot of shit on those. Yeah, I, I would, uh, in fact, Roscoe had hit me up too. And it's like, I don't know. I, I, I feel we're at a time right now that people don't want to spend money. Yeah, that's true. It's everything's down right now in comics. I dude, you know, I, I, I park parking it and just letting people shop it is just, it's just the way. You know, it's like hey, I got Hey Artem, I'm not bad to cut you off, Nick. Hey, we got a new member, Artem, my guy. Thank you for joining the Link Squad. Welcome to the <laughs> Hold it before you um, chime in, Nick. Uh, Artem, you're just in time. Thank you for becoming a member. Don't forget, for the month of what are we, April, we're um, giving away a $200 comic book mystery box courtesy of Mr. Nick's Kicks and Comics. So you will be entered into that drawing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you only have to write in the hashtag once. You don't get extra entries for writing it a million times. <laughs> Yeah, it says here in the private chat that Kenneth has typed hashtag exec 22 times. So somebody counted it. 23. 23. Good luck. I hope he wins now. I hope he wins. Let's, let's, let's run this. Let's run this. Good luck, Kenneth. <laughs> Good luck, Kenny Bird. Let's go, Kenny, Kenny Bird. Bird. Let's go. Kenny put in the work. Let's get Kenny some books. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Flash Ray. He said he wanted that Blunt Man and Chronic book early on. There you go. Flash, Flash Ray, hit me up on IG, brother, so I could get this out to you. Artem, also, if you have Instagram, hit me up on Instagram so I could get um your Link Squad welcome pack out to you. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I told you guys that I haven't been feeling well this week. And uh, I have I have a CAT scan scheduled for Wednesday, and they told me already it was $782 after my insurance. So. Hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Sell your gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, claim. Adult warning right now. There will be some titties in three, two, one. T I T I E S. Yeah, tie tees. There's some tie tees. <laughs> little uh, camel toe there, too. Damn, you pervert. Um, oh, Durs, hold up. Wait a minute. Let's plug Durs. Durs said he had a sale or something. Hold on. Let's go back. Sunday on whatnot. Link is in the description over on his shit. There you go. Doing a random giveaway. So, people, make sure you go in. All giveaways. No tips. No nothing. Don't buy shit from Durs. Don't buy shit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just go. Um, Mark, what do you got going on after that? Uh, uh, Sunday night will be at Weeks In at eight thirty going live. Oh shit! Yo, your dad is wild, son. Is he wrong? <laughs> nope. Like, stop, Dad! <laughs> uh, <laughs> at Weeks End, big big giant show coming up for um. Guess oh, that key. Guess that key. Wednesday is the fiftieth episode. Ooh. Sector 2815 on YouTube, if a mod can drop Sector's link in the chat, that'd be great. But uh, guess that key is uh, every other Wednesday at 9.30 Eastern time. Nine? Nine. 9.30. It one of those times. Yeah, it's a, it's a live game show. Chat participates. Uh, giveaway every, every episode. And it's the 50th episode, so it's a massive giveaway. Tons of books, signed books, Ratio slabs, y'all y'all gonna want to be there. It's gonna be, gonna be a, the give a celebration, bitches. The giveaway is insane. Prize lizards, make sure you come out and support. Give you goblins the whole the whole nine yards, ten yards, eleven yards. Go ahead and hit that link, sub him up, so you uh, find the show. Yeah, this weekend uh, I might catch. Um, I wanted to see the Civil War movie, but I don't know. Uh, Mrs. Lynx is, is not too keen on that, so we might watch Abigail. That's what it's called, Abigail, the what Little Girl Vampire the, movie. The Ministry oh. of Ungentle, Ungentlemanly Warfare dropped too. That new guy, Richie oh. Flick, that's fucking wild. That, that came out this week, yeah. It came out this weekend. They're doing a terrible job at promoting that. Yeah, I see, you know I, I, 
in the beginning, they promoted the hell out of it. And like the past couple weeks, I haven't seen anything. Really. They blew their budget early on. <laughs> but uh, wow. Civil War is getting like you either love it or hate it because yeah. it's very ambiguous. They don't like the, the the feedback is it's ambiguous. If you're going in there with preconceived ideas and hoping this movie's going to co-sign your beliefs, you're going to yeah. be let down no matter who you are. That Alex Garland kind of played it straight. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a movie. I hate when people go in and be like, "Oh, but I thought there was gonna be this and blah blah." That's not what you whatever. Yeah, so we'll we'll probably see Abigail tomorrow and probably you know, paint the town red. Listen to some Doja Cat, some Sam oh, Smith. I did find a, uh, a a website that has nothing but autopsy videos, so I figure I pass that along to you so you guys can watch that. <laughs> Yo, that's that's like that's like. It's like porn in my household, dog. <laughs> Maybe like, after you got paid in the town. Jesus Christ. Start up one of those. And... <laughs> Yo, babe, remember when we used to watch autopsy videos together? Ooh. Paint the town red and paint the house white. Yeah. Oh, Turn that room into a sauna real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yo, pass those plastic sheets. <laughs> You're about to get plugged. Oh, snap. Every plug. <laughs> Yeah, we we role play as corpse and corridor. Oh God, Jesus Christ! And on that note, uh, everybody in the chat, I uh, hope everyone has a fantastic, safe weekend. Uh, stay safe in these streets. Long days and pleasant nights, people. Uh, Miss So, I, I say it all the time. Miss So is my number one. I'm sorry, everyone else. Mm -hmm. Miss So is my number one. She's on another. She's on another plane of existence. Um, again, not not to keep plugging this, but the Austin LeMay print, there are only five left. Uh, if you want one, pick one up at djlinks.bigcartel.com or hit me up directly and um, we'll get you situated. So that's that. Everyone else, enjoy your weekend. Nick, uh, you feel better, my guy. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to try. I hope so. They are me. Aww. Happy nation. <laughs> Peace. Illuminati.